Good afternoon. Cheers and welcome. Um, this is the uh, start of the Fine Wine and Gourmet Dine programme here at Total Towers in Javier on the Costa Blanca in, of course, Northern Spain. But I'm some considerable distance away from uh, where the wine comes from for this particular programme. We're having a special uh, first hour of the programme today. Um, we're talking about English wines and specifically about the Langham Estate Winery. Uh, which has won some very prestigious uh, medals in recent competitions. Interesting, isn't it, that uh, English sparkling wine coming from, well, I wouldn't say nowhere, but certainly coming from a considerable way behind other sparkling wine producing areas, um, suddenly it seems to be on everybody's lips and include pasta with his lips and into your mouths and, of course, into your tummies as well. It's absolutely lovely. This is the Langham Estate Winery. It's the uh, Cuvée, uh, I just call it Cuvée, the Classic Cuvée, I should say. And therefore it's called Classic Cuvée because it's made up of the three main grape varieties which make Champagne. We've got Chardonnay in there, 50% in fact. And then the other 25% Pinot Noir and 25% Pinot Meunier as well. So it's actually that classic, but it's not cha Champagne. No, no, it's English sparkling wine, and it's proud to be that way. And one of the reasons it's proud is, well, because um, over the last year, um, so um, I, think, I think it was actually 2015 to 2016 are the figures that I've got, there's been a 9% increase in sales of English sparkling wine. 9%. It's good, but when you compare that to the 2012-2013 vintage, there's been a 76, wow, 76 percent increase in um, sales of sparkling wines. This is one of the reasons why. This is the Langham uh, Classic Cuvée. It's absolutely lovely. It's got that sort of golden colour that you expect. There's really um, lots of very, very fine bubbles. When you first pour it into the glass, those bubbles are coming from almost all, all parts of the glass. But now it's settled down to be a continuous stream of fine bubbles. Gives an idea of the elegance of the wine. We've said the colour, very pale gold. Let's have a little look at the nose. Hmm. We've got some of those typical brioche notes, a little bit of pastry in there, uh, Danish pastry. Danish pastry with a little touch of, of maybe some apple there or maybe some banana in there as well because this isn't what you would call any way a sweet um, sparkling wine, not at all. It's a brut, it's, it's a brut wine, uh, which means it's dry of course, but the scale for brut is up to about 12 milligrams, it's about 9.5 uh, I think milligrams um, of sugar per litre. So it's just over that halfway mark between very, very dry um, and the sweeter style of brut. But it's not sweet at all. It's a lovely wine for aperitives. And um, I'm just about to start the, the fine wine and gourmet dine programme you mentioned before. So I've actually stole a bit of a march on it in the studio because I wanted to put this out first. And uh, a little bit later on, and I tried this already, a little bit later on, um, live on air, I'll be tasting and um, some homemade bread it's homemade brown bread it's got lots and lots of seeds in it very good roughage in there really good um, and i put some uh, a little bit of uh, cream cheese on it and on that top of the cream cheese i've put some uh, paprika that's the sort of a, the picante pa paprika so there's a little bit of heat to it and then i've put some of that gravadax the you know the uh, um, uh, the smoked salmon, which has got some dill on it as well, a little bit of oil, and that's really nice. I actually tried that with it before. It goes perfectly. Well, you'd expect it to, wouldn't you? Sparkling wine um, and smoked salmon. But one of the beauties of this particular wine is that while that's very good for aperitives, and who's girl cocktails etc and um, it's also got a little bit more body to it so this wine is going to go well particularly well i would say with shellfish also seafood generally but you know i think you can do some chicken and some lighter meats with this as well why because it's had that extra depth in spain we would say en lima in other words it's actually been with its lees for um, 24 months, two years therefore, which makes it easily a reserver in cover terms. It's not cover, of course, but that gives you an idea. It's one of those quality sparkling wines, which is great for celebration, don't get me wrong, but it's going to last a little bit longer than that, give a little bit more than that, because it's going to be a really nice partner for different foods as well. 
I'm really enjoying this. In fact, uh, we had a lovely time in Dorset and went to see the Langham Estate. Uh, and uh, we had a bit of a problem um, not being able to taste this particular wine. So they very, very kindly sent me a bottle and also the Blanc de Blanc. And I'll be doing another one of these videos about that at a later date because shortly the Fine Wine and Gourmet Dine programme is about to start. www.totalfm.es Hope you've enjoyed listening and I hope you enjoy this wine when you go and try it because I would really recommend that you do exactly that. Salut, as you say in Spain, or cheers.